Welcome to Kestra, where today I'm going to teach you all of the fundamentals you need to know to get started building your first workflow. Now, what is Kestra? Now, Kestra is a unified orchestration platform to simplify your business critical workflows and help you govern them both from the UI as well as with code. Today, I'm gonna walk you through how you can build your very own workflow. To start with, we need to install Kestra on our machine. Now you can do this within 60 seconds with this video here, but the difference is that will not have a persistent database. So anytime you restart it, you will lose all of your data. So what I'm gonna do is take the Docker Compose example in GitHub, which I have already downloaded here, and then I'm gonna open a new terminal and type in Docker Compose up. And this will have me a uh, version of Kestra running with a database all ready for us to use. Once I've done that, I can go to localhost 8080 and I'll be presented with Kestra ready to go. Let's create our first workflow. Now there's a few concepts that we need to cover so that we can build our workflow successfully. To start with, every flow has an ID and a namespace. The ID is a unique name for the workflow and the namespace is an area of where this workflow will be stored, useful for organizing them into categories. On top of that, every workflow has tasks, which are steps to your workflow for the logic that you want to happen. Now this workflow is very simple. It's using the task type of a log, which requires the property message. So when I press save and execute, we'll see it's gonna say hello world to the terminal. And as we can see, it says hello world. We can actually change the task type to a number of different things by using the autocomplete here to help us out. And we're gonna use a Python script task here for our example to get some Python code executing as part of our workflow. Now the script task enables us to write our Python code directly inside of the workflow. Great for short scripts. And I also have a before commands property here that allows me to install any dependencies I need, such as requests. Now it's worth noting that this will run inside of a Docker container, which will keep all of our dependencies isolated. Now what I want to do is get the number of GitHub stars in the Kestra repository, and then send that back to Kestra as an output so I can use that in a later task. When I press save and run this, what we'll see is it's going to run our Python code inside of a container, but we're only gonna see the value as a log message, not a usable value that we can access and use in other tasks. By installing the Kestra Python module, we can now use this to send an output back to Kestra in a key value pair. And as you can see here, I have GitHub stars and I'm passing it my variable from Python. So if I run this now, what we'll see in the outputs tab now is that our variable is now accessible using GitHub stars. So now let's use a log task to be able to access that variable and print it out separately. So now my workflow has an ID and a namespace and we have two different tasks. Each of these tasks have their own ID and a type and then they have their own custom logic which we can use the integrated documentation to help us figure out what each property does. On top of that, we're using outputs here to be able to access the value from a previous task and then use that in a later task. So when I press execute here, what we're gonna see in the logs is the Python code is going to get the data we need and it's going to then pass the data it's collected and pass it to our next task which enables us to be able to build these dynamic and flexible workflows. Hopefully that's given you a good insight into what you can do in Kestra and to help you build your first workflow. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel where you can check out other use cases inside of Kestra.